Hey everybody, my name is Justin and this is my one year review of my Nespresso Virtuo Plus coffee machine. So I just wanted to get one thing out of the way real quick, which is Nespresso versus Keurig versus the rest of the world of coffee. And I think that they brand themselves as a very premium experience, which they are. It's a very good experience. When you compare them to Keurig, in my opinion, they are better. They have more control over their supply chain. They have better brewing type method instead of just a drip. This uses a spinning action to get the water through the coffee. But if you want to compare it to somebody who actually takes time out of their day to make a good coffee in the morning where they're grinding their own beans and you know they're making a process out of it there isn't really a good comparison between the two i mean the a good coffee where it's freshly ground and made with somebody who knows what they're doing is going to taste vastly different than something that comes out of a aluminum capsule that was grinded up weeks or months ago potentially with that said this is a very good machine and i do enjoy it so for me, it's not just about the quality of the coffee. It's about the ease of use. It's about how fast I can do it. It's about all those things. If, if you're a person who you just, you will spend 10 minutes in the morning doing it, this machine isn't for you. But if you're somebody who wants a little more options than a Keurig, but you don't want to spend all the time of learning the craft and doing it yourself, which there is something to be said for that. It's just not for me. I think that this machine is probably for you. So I just wanna go over some things after a year of use that I enjoy about this machine. This isn't like a tech spec kind of thing where I'm going to tell you all the different cool features about the machine. This is just what I use in my experience using it. And the first thing is the pods. So Nespresso doesn't make their money off of their machines. They make it off the pods. So when you're buying one of these, it might, the machine might be on sale for half off. They usually are. Instead of being like $250, it'll be like 120 bucks or something like that. I think that's what I got this for a year ago. And that was just not even on sale. That was just a random time of the year. So they have a premium price on it, but they don't really ever charge that. For me, the pods, the reason why I went with the virtual line instead of the normal line is because we, me and my wife enjoy coffee as well as espresso. And with espresso, typically we're making lattes. We're not just drinking espresso. So being able to do either was the big reason for doing this instead of their original line. Each of these pods, they can be anywhere from, I think I wanna say something like 70, 75 cents all the way up to like maybe a dollar 40, just depending on which one you get. So they come all the way in the, in the small size down here. These two are actually the same size. It's just decaf and normal. Single shot espresso double shot espresso. This is a small coffee. I don't know what it's called, but it's like five ounces, 5.07 ounces. This is a normal size coffee, seven ounces. And then this is a double coffee. It's 14 ounces. So you have all the options of all the different sizes of things that you would want. And the price kind of varies between each. Like this is a Zimbabwe special edition coffee that they did, which is significantly more expensive than their normal decaf, but it's also more expensive than their normal big coffee. So the price doesn't necessarily go up with size. It goes up with, I guess, kind of like the limited editionness, which is one of the things that I like about it. Like I said earlier, with Keurig, you have a hundred different companies or a thousand different companies. They can put their coffee into the K-cup. And these, only Keurig is making the pods. So you have a pretty limited selection of pods to choose from. How they counteract that is they have limited edition ones every month or so. So every month they'll come out with a new limited edition. This one is a something Nordic. This is a Nordic black. This is a Zimbabwe. So they have different beans from different part of the world and they'll like tell you, you know, like where it comes from and give you a backstory on all of it, which I really enjoy. I think that's a cool aspect of it. And they're really good. Like they make things for different, they make pods for different stuff. Like this is really good with milk and you know, this will be really good by itself or this will be really good in a cortado or something like that. They have kind of specific uses for their individual pods, but that is how they make their money. So if you are a coffee drinker that drinks like five cups a day, it's going to be anywhere from like five to seven bucks a day, depending on 
I guess it really it could maybe be like four four to like seven bucks a day depending on which pods you're drinking which if you add that up over a month and there's two of you it can be a lot me and my wife are not heavy coffee drinkers we probably drink one a day and with these pods they do have expiration dates and stuff like that I have had a few when they send them over they're expired but all you do is email them and then they just send you a new one it's like two-day shipping where I live I live in Maryland and there's an espresso near here apparently uh, not an actual store but wherever they ship from and it gets here within one day so their customer service is on point like anything that you need they will take care of so they're they're really good in in that sense so next is the machine itself so again we chose this machine specifically because uh, it does multiple types of coffee. Their other original machine is much smaller, but it only does espresso. So it just depends on what you want. This also works differently in the sense that it uses thinning, like I think it's centrifugal motion, and the water gets pushed into the pod, and then as it's spinning, it comes out on the outside of the, the pod, and it forces it up out the sides, uh, whereas the other machine actually uses pressure to pump in, kind of like a more original espresso machine. It just doesn't work at the pressure of like a really high-end espresso machine. So it's not the same as a normal espresso either way you cut it. And with this, the way that it's brewed, they really get a lot of that crema at the top, which if you've ever seen an espresso ad, they, they really focus on that. And it's not really a true crema. I have a friend who's super into espresso, shout out to Daniel, and he basically showed me the difference between this crema and an actual crema, which the actual crema is made from like oils when you put a really high pressure on them through the beans and it's the oils that are coming up to the top whereas this it's just kind of like a foaminess and it does it with coffee too so when you give somebody a coffee from this and you don't put any cream or sugar in it they're gonna they typically ask if you added cream or something because it looks like it is because it has a top layer on it which is fine it doesn't like taste bad or anything if anything it, it's good and cool but it's not really a authentic espresso experience so you can choose the design of the virtuo it just depends on which one you want i think they have like three or four different designs we just like this one and we like this uh this color a couple things that i like about it is it's electric i like that option or i like that it does that each of the pods have a different um barcode that's on the bottom and it just automatically senses so you don't have to press any button there's literally one button on it which the one button is, is cool, actually two, because this is technically a button as well. But it makes it a little harder for cleaning because there's not like a dedicated cleaning button or anything. It's all like press it three times and then press down and hold and do that kind of stuff. So whenever it comes to cleaning and, and maintenance, I always have to look, look it up online and see how to do it again. But it's not too bad, it takes me like two seconds. Speaking of which, the only real maintenance that we do is we make sure there's not a pod in there. Pod will stay inside where like the water injectors are and all that kind of stuff so i try and kind of keep that clean by making sure after i do it i pop it up and making sure the pod goes out i would say about once a month make sure there's nothing in it fill this fill the the back reservoir up here with water and just run water through it and it will basically empty this and kind of give you like brownish water that comes out of it so there is some spots where the coffee builds up so doing that once a month is good uh, and then like once a year, or I guess we did it at about 10 months, they have a descaling solution that you actually pour into this, into the reservoir and mix, and then it does a whole process that's a little bit longer. And then after it, you gotta put another thing of water in it and then run it out. So that's kind of like a deep clean that you do, depending on how much you use it. It actually has a light for that on the top. And we didn't have a light, but it had been a long time and I'm kind of a germaphobe, so I decided to do that. A few other aspects about this is the reservoir in the back can move to either side. So depending on you know where it's at in your kitchen or your your coffee area, it's pretty adjustable. It's easy to take the reservoir off, fill it up. We use filtered water. Out of the back, there's a container that holds all of your old pods that come out the top of it, and you just take these. And actually, your old pods, they have a recycling program for free. They give you a bag and it has like a prepaid label on it and all your old pods you just dump them we just dump them in there when we're done and then once that bag is filled up you just take it over to ups and they compost the used coffee beans and then they recycle the shell because it's all aluminum i thought that was a pretty cool deal it makes me feel a little better about spending more a little bit more per cup knowing that when it's done it's going to possibly be another cup 
Another thing to note is this thing right here is adjustable. I will say that I do wish that this was motorized, kind of like the top, because we go from doing coffee to espresso a lot with a different cup, and just having to take it off and move it around is definitely a first world problem and not something to really complain about, but I'm doing a review. I'm saying what I feel about it. It's really easy to clean. You take this off and then this honeycomb comes out and then you just wash it out and it's pretty easy. Same thing with the back reservoir and the water reservoir and the pod collector. You just take it out, clean it out, put it back. That's about all the cleaning that we've done um, other than wiping down the outside occasionally. So super easy to maintain, super easy to clean. While it's running, it's gotten progressively louder over the last year of use. So I had an extra little rubber sticker that came with a piece of furniture and I just ended up sticking a couple on the bottom of it to stop the vibrations because that's kind of what it does is it spins really fast and I think that's what's making the noise as well as like forcing the water through it. So that kind of helped with the noise a little bit but it's not particularly a, a quiet system. It's not, it's not like wake up your wife kind of loud but it's also not like a, I would say Keurig is noticeably quieter because I think Keurig is just a drip. It's not it's not, there's no forcing water in, there's no spinning, there's no any of that stuff. So this is noticeably louder than that. With all that said, this is another product that I would definitely recommend to somebody who again is out there looking for something quick and easy, also more premium than other products that are there out there on the market. Just be prepared to spend a decent amount of money on pods. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you have any questions or anything, comment below. And if you enjoyed the review, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. Thanks.